What's up, everybody? Michael Silva here. You're watching the Daily Stock Market Brief. I had to put out an episode today, find some time on my vacation. Today's date is May 12th. We've had some stock market mayhem, some blood in the streets taking place. So we're going to be talking about some key levels and some potential opportunities coming up here in the very near future. Could be tomorrow, perhaps. Before we get into today's episode, I just want to thank the active patrons, 409. The last post that I did was May 11th at about 5.30 in the morning Pacific Standard Time before the market opened. And it was me liquidating into cash. Um, one, just mainly because of these stock market briefs, looking at some of these signals, we're really just signaling a sell-off sort of position. And we're starting to see some of that weakness today. Um, so hopefully that, you know, most of you that are in this group liquidated some of your positions and kind of saved yourself from not really that much mayhem, but so, you know, some pretty significant selling for the most part. Uh, what's been taking place? Well, the April jobs payrolls came out recently, right? Uh, missing their, their expected uh, numbers. And then also the CPI number today um, was quote unquote higher than expected, right? Very, very fast leap, fastest since 2008. That right there in itself puts pressure on the 10 year and we needed some sort of trigger that can potentially break this 10 year yield out of this bull flag. And if a bull flag breaks out here on the 10 year, we've been talking about how that can really put pressure on tech and tech makes up a big portion of the indices. As you can see here on the market dashboard, tech took the one of the biggest hits along with consumer discretionary. And we've been saying that the, the two the two big ones that if we have laggards there, tech and consumer discretionary, you can see some really big red days. I believe on the SPY, um, the XLK, or sorry, technology makes up for 24% and consumer discretionary makes up for 11 to 13%. So if you get big down days on these, um, you know, it just drags those, uh, drags the markets down even further. You can see here pretty much right across the board, other than the VIX up 27%, holy moly. Um, the Dow Jones took it on the chin, 681 points down, but from a percentage point basis, we had small caps really take it, take a blow today. Small caps, small caps were down three point uh, two one percent. The only one positive on the day was energy. Now I'm going to be kind of flowing through this. I got to keep this video somewhat shorter, and I have a lot of charts to go through, so bear with me here. Uh, the VIX. This is that whole Bollinger Band short squeeze that we were talking about. You know, during this pattern here, why the Bollinger Band width was contracting lower than we've ever seen, or not lower than we've ever seen, but it was coming back into areas that typically result in a squeeze to the upside. You can see that squeeze now is fully taking place here. We closed at 27.59. On the 30 minute perspective, we have a little bit of a negative divergence taking place. So this is where I think more opportunities are gonna potentially come into play. So first off, we filled these both, both these gaps above us. That's typically where you wanna consider potentially hedging long. There is one more exposure that's not on this chart. It's right around the 40 range. There's also an open gap. Now we have all these gaps below us that would be the opportunity for, for, for long positions for those gaps to go get filled. So keep that in mind as we're flowing through this uh, because we do have quite a bit more to go through. So let's go ahead and do that. S&P 500 on the daily time frame, big red candle, a lot of selling pressure, increased volume, price percent oscillator heading down. We've been talking about that lack of momentum as it's been grinding on this area of resistance. And then we also had that negative divergence play out here on the S&P 500 too. Price is right around the 50 day moving average. Sometimes that can act as support, but we still have you know exposure below us, all these uh, open gaps. I think that um, it'd be really nice long position from this 4,000 to 3,900 range right around the 100 day moving average. But we'll see kind of what the market is going to do um, with these big rubber band moves to the downside. Uh, keep in mind that in bear markets, you get some very extensive bull rallies. So you can get some very, very strong strength, very similar to what we saw yesterday in tech, how it gapped way down, but we just rallied straight back up. And then today, obviously, you know, it reverses. Here's the S&P 500 on the weekly time frame. Big, huge red candle so far, but we have more time left in the week. The uh, immediate exposure you can see can potentially break this pattern and head lower to this previous area of resistance. That could be support. And that really puts us right at around that 3,900 uh, marker. Now on the 20 period moving average, it's at 3,955. So that's where I'm kind of thinking of confluence as support. So the 20 period uh, weekly moving average is right around that 4,000 range. And then you can see that right here around the 4,000 range is slightly below the 50 day moving average and between the 100 uh, period moving average. So there's a strong possibility to see some bounces from that area. Um, something to keep in mind from a BP perspective, the BP chart, we're not oversold as of this moment, but we are heading um, quickly down there. So that's also a potential opportunity for when we get that overextension, that's where you want to start hedging long. 
and, and looking for long setups. Okay, um, you can see the negative divergence playing out here, right, uh, on the percent of stocks above the 50-day moving average, right? I, I, I was seeing a lot of uh, comment, not a lot, but a lot of people talking about, no, negative divergences don't matter. Well, I mean, if you just look at a chart and look through history, the negative divergences that play out, they do matter. Um, just going back to 2020, you can see here, that one mattered. This one is currently mattering at this particular point in time. Let's look at the Dow Jones. Dow Jones is still above the 50-day moving average, Big hit today. We haven't seen something like that for quite some time. Down 681 points. Uh, immediate downside risk is still that 100 period moving average. That would be the most ideal um, to get a nice full correction here and then come into this confluence of support right around 32,000. Let's see if we can get down there. As of right now, it still has a lot of work to do. Uh, from a weekly perspective, you can see that resistance line that we drew out, tagged it perfectly, completely reversed, but we're still kind of within this tactical uh, pattern here. Oops, wrong chart. Let's look at the IWM, right sitting at the neckline. Okay, so this is where I'm talking about the possibility for opportunities. So the neckline hasn't broken yet, right? And these are typically good areas that can act as support as we've seen previously. So you can manage a trade very well here if you were to enter in and have a stop loss slightly below it to see where really tomorrow kind of ends up. Uh, obviously, be careful because this could be an advanced head and shoulders topping pattern. And, you know, we'll, we'll see how that plays out. And if it does break down, I think the immediate uh, downside risk would be right around 190 to 195. From a weekly perspective, it is currently breaking this trend line. That's not a good sign. It's uh, cracked below the 13 EMA. Uh, long downside, if it came down here, that would be amazing, right? That 170, 175, be prepared to, to you know, start going long in positions um, if, if we reach those levels. Now, remember, this is all about being very tactical. So if you, you want to find opportunities in oversold conditions to go long in certain stocks, but you want to make sure you're holding stop losses in place because you don't want to just can see the market continue to fall or roll over. Uh, from a monthly perspective, we are sitting right at about the monthly 5 EMA, and that could act also as an area of support. So I'm seeing a lot of confluence for support here. Just note that this could have been an exhaustion break similar to what we've seen previously. If we start seeing some spiked up volume, this could be um, just an exhaustion break where we head back down into this channel. But as it stands right now, obviously it's still in bullish context. We're right at that 5 EMA on the monthly time frame. A lot of time left in the month to go though. Uh, the queues, look, tech, technology took a big hit to the downside. I would be heavily, um, my opinion would be more more focused on tech as far as um, going long on certain positions because they are getting very oversold. Uh, as you can see here, um, which we'll go into some uh, BP charts in a moment, it broke out. Now, this is very similar to semiconductors, but semiconductors cracked through this support already. So just note that we have a little confluence area trend line of support right here that could potentially bounce from with a gap. Um, immediate more downside risk would be this bottom right here, which is right at around 300 to 305. So this support zone right in there for the queues. Uh, the queues on the weekly time frame, slightly below the EMA, the 20 EMA. And I want to show these couple dashed lines right here because this is this is pretty interesting stuff. This is where the month opened, or sorry, the year opened up. So 2021, you can see this week really just brought us right back to the market open. So we're not we're not that far from being down on the year in the queues. So this yearly open can act as a level of support as it did previously here. And we're right at the, the um, 20 EMA. So this, this seems to me like a lot of confluence of support. Now, if the 10 year yield is really breaking out here, then we could see some more selling pressure. So just note that this makes for good risk first reward trade from a long perspective. You wanna make sure you have some long positions right? Um, just in case that the market wants to continue to rip higher and higher, which is very, very possible. We've seen that happen plenty of times. Now, the BP chart, BP NDX, you can see here we're in that oversold condition, um, slightly negative divergence too here. Um, I didn't draw that out though. I'm just kind of noticing that now, which means that it could very well find itself a bounce. All right. Um, let's look at the 30 minute charts. I want to go over these just to kind of to show you that we are we are getting pretty oversold readings right now. Um, first off, the SPY positive divergence you can see crack down lower. We have these gaps below us. That's the immediate risk to the downside uh, to fill those gaps. And keep in mind the volume here. There's a lot of uh, volume that was traded back and forth, so there's probably a lot of support down in this range. Um, just note that we are already oversold pretty significantly. This cracked down through a heavy area. That 412 was a big area of support, so it's very possible we come back up to back test that. So you want to 
be prepared for that if it does and then look for an area of resistance. So if you were looking to short the market and you know, you know, put on short hedges, look for a bounce up into that 412 and then have a stop loss or you know, give it a little bit more breathing room. There is a gap still that is above us, but that's always a possibility too um, from this perspective. Uh, from the DIA, this is the Dow Jones Industrial Average ETF. We are very oversold here, formed this little bear pennant still says that there's potential room to go down further. We have a lot of support. Notice these big volume bars right around this 328 to 330. And then on top of that, we have a gap right there too as well. So um, it is over, it's very oversold and we're kind of in this area of support too. So just just keep in mind there, we, we could see some potential bounces here um, and then look for weakness, okay? It could be dead cat bounces. And then the IWM, uh, Russell 2000, Look, at we're coming into this little trend line of support right here, positive divergences as well. And this is sitting right at that monthly 5 EMA. So a lot of confluence for support here. It's a very good opportunity to hedge long on individual stocks. Um, that's just my opinion. But the reason why I believe it's good to hedge here is because we've seen some big moves from those areas. And if we get another big move, you can scale out and then look for um, positions to potentially hedge short again. Um, and like if it just keeps continuing to press further down, well, then guess what? Then you just make sure you have a stop loss and you get stopped out. Easy to manage. You got to be tactical. Here's the cues. The cues close those two gaps. And now we're moving back within this range where there is a lot of volume and previous um, support. You can see we found support in, the, in, in these areas. We have a gap right here to close that gap. We'd have to get down to around 314. So that would be also on a positive divergence where we could see a potential bounce up. But this right here is definite topping topping type pattern. You can see we cracked down, we back tested, we headed lower. So there's a strong possibility that we can also head right back up and then get rejected. So you got to keep that kind of in mind. All right, everybody, that's all I have for you on today's daily stock market brief. And yes, I spelled brief wrong because last time I did that, everyone commented, which was better for the algorithm. So I did it again for all the trolls that are leaving the comments before watching till the very end. I'm going to go ahead and uh, make sure that I send this timestamp saying that I did it on purpose just for you. All right, everybody, that's all I got. Have a good day.